Good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing today? First day of uh, the week. And this week ahead looks like uh, it's going to be a busy in terms of trading. Okay. And we have some important news events that they will uh, affect the volatility in the market in some commodity pairs. So we're going to go to have a look. I hope everyone had a nice weekend and you are ready for this uh, trading week ahead. So just to, to mention it as always, um, this webinar is for general information only and it doesn't include or provide any uh, trading, investing or personal uh, advice, okay? So before we start, guys, please make sure if you haven't, uh, just uh, subscribe on the Telegram channel so you never miss any announcement. And especially during the weekend, we um, we put out uh, some uh, important announcements about stocks and about uh, market events. So just make sure you subscribe the Telegram channel. Also on YouTube, especially for those you haven't yet follow us on YouTube at Admirals Global. And please guys, make sure uh, you give us a thumbs up after uh, we upload any, any video, especially this morning briefings, because it shows me as well uh, if, you, if you like it and um, if the participation is uh, as good as most of the times, then it's a good indication for us as well. Now, just the promotion we are running, it's in regards to the spreads. Now we have the spreads about 15 to 25% down. So especially for intraday traders, it's, uh, it's really, really awesome. Now, let's go to the major news events for this week. And uh, we have today a uh, speech from the behalf of Bank of Japan, tomorrow uh, from uh, UK, but really the major news events, they are coming on Wednesday with the reverse Bank of New Zealand. Interest rates uh, forecasting to increase them by half percent. And later on the day, we have the Bank of Canada want to take the interest rate from 1.5% all the way to 2.25%. That's a big move and very fast in this short term horizon. So uh, we will anticipate a lot of volatility in this pair, okay, in this currency. Uh, the Canadian dollar. So all the pairs against the Canadian dollar, they will be uh, obviously affected by this. All right, so let's go to the charts. I already see some people asking about uh, some pairs here. So let's go to MT5 platform. Today, I'm not gonna ask you if you can see my screen. I assume that everyone can see the screen, right? <laughs> so what do we have here? We are on the weekly chart, first day of the week, pound USD. We see that the bears are still in control. The market is making lower highs and lower lows. You can see the bodies here. We didn't have a lot of activity within this body. So it's smaller than this one here. It's also some obvious point as we approach towards to this support zone, then we're going to have this zone, then we're going to have these low points here if the market keep trading lower and lower and lower. But as I told you many times, we trade what we see and not what we think. Okay, 
So until now, we see a market that it's putting lower lows and lower highs. So this is a downtrend and we trade, we sell every pullback. Now, where is a pullback for you that it's a good uh, area to short? It depends on your trading plan. For me, this based on this scenario here, I will anticipate a pullback a little bit higher. I'm not short sure right now. If that's not going to happen, then it's part of my trading plan and I'm fine with that and that's okay. All right. So on our watch list, we have for this week, this pair here, pound USD. Sarvak ask for the Australian dollar, US dollar, and we're going to have a look in a while. So Euro USD. We see the market break out of this descending triangle. So I'm waiting for the price to come back to this area here to get into the downside in this market. Now we are very deep into the impulse move. So we go to the four hour chart. We have this lower lows here, lower highs. The market came all the way to the last swing high. So uh, for me, nothing to get involved right now. I would like to sell on higher prices. So I'm waiting for this pullback. Let's go to the Australian dollar, US dollar. We had this support, which broke recently and been retested two times as a resistance. Now a broken support becomes resistant. The market made a new low here, pushed back. Now it's trading lower. We are in a downtrend. So the four hour chart, it doesn't show a clear uh, direction. The daily chart, it's more clear than the four hour chart. But anyway, what do we see on the four hour chart? That was the broken support acted as a resistance here. The market didn't make a new low. Another trial here, the market didn't make a new low. And now it retests back this broken support, which now we said is a resistance zone. And it's just hovering around here. So uh from a technical perspective this market on the four hour chart is moving sideways on the daily chart it's downtrend so uh if you are watching some divergence to play and uh, you want to buy this market for any reason just my purpose here is not to tell you what to do but to analyze the market from a technical perspective and based on my experience, uh, out loud how I will be trading this market. Okay, so I'm still bearish uh, on this one here. However, doesn't mean that I will participate right now. Okay. USD Canadian dollar on the weekly, it's more clear and I will explain you why. We see sometimes this, and guys, this is a very, very uh, important lesson to keep it from today. Sometimes we see the market spikes with these tails, okay? And then the market is selling off and then we say, ah, that's a reversal. Yeah, reversal, but a reversal of what? Of just this move or it's good enough to change the whole trend of the market. Sometimes it's really wise to flip on the line charts. You can see here 
where I'm pointing now. This symbol here is the line chart for those you don't know it. If you press here, the candles disappear and we have only the closing prices and we see them plotted with a line. That's why we call them line charts. So the closing prices, they show that this market, it's clearly in an uptrend, correct? I'm sure everyone can see it. Can you guys see and understand what I'm explaining here? We see the line chart showing us that the market is closing on higher prices. Can everyone see that? Regardless on the candle patterns, we see that we have these spikes, but sometimes they are really confusing and they get awareness away, uh, away from the important picture of any market. So we see it as an uptrend with the line charts. If we go to the daily chart, what do we see here? We see the market. Um, okay, let's keep it this. Let's keep it here. We see the market making a higher high. Then sellers they try to push the market lower, but if we draw this resistance, uh, this support uptrend, we can see that. Uh, the buyers, they stepped in and they don't allow the sellers to make a lower low from the last swing. So you can see this low is holding here. And then buyers, they try to make another trial to buy and push the price higher. They cannot push the price higher. However, when the sellers, they try to sell this market, the buyers, they stepped in here to rescue the prices and they drive the market higher. So we have a pattern here. Uh, we call it ascending triangle. Ascending triangle is when the market is trying to, to make its way upwards, but there are few declines and the buyers, they stepped in and buy in higher prices. They don't let the market make lower lows. And at some point, we expect a strong breakout out of this uh, resistant zone. That's a bit advanced for those you are new in trading. However, uh, because I know that we have on this webinar also people they are trading for a while and also people they like to read themselves beyond the materials we have on our admirals website. So I, I like to help everyone here, okay. So here we have uh, this ascending triangle. Now we are in the middle, we are not in the, at the edge, but we are just in the middle hovering around. So uh, I'm pretty flat on this market right now. Also, although the four hour chart, for those you are trading swings on the four hour chart, it can show you that we have lower highs. We have, here is the lower highs. The third one, we have the lower low. Now you have another lower low here. So some people, they are looking to sell down from this point onwards. It's not what I really want to do with this market right now, because all the US dollars, they show, they show a bit strength across. USD yen, here we had this strong, uh, resistance, we are on the daily chart. The market, we have another ascending triangle pattern. If you can see here, low, low, low. Every low is higher than the previous low. We have resistance here at the same level. The market is trying to break out. So On the four hour chart, we can see this breakout here. 
not very clear, but it's still a breakout. So if we draw a resist a support trend line here on the four hour chart, we can uh, we have the last swing here. So an area of potential buys is somewhere here. As, although also for those you are using Fibonacci retracements, you can mark the golden ratio about 50 to 60%, 60%, 61.8%, sorry. So we have three levels of confluence, Fibonacci confluence, trend line uh, support. So it's a good area of buys, this one here. If the market doesn't fall right now below, yeah, we want to see the market slow down on this pullback. So we're gonna wait and keep this on our watch list. Pound yen, remember last time we spoke and I marked this area for potential sales. On the four hour, we are still below this area here, which it was the last swing the market is trading here. Maybe it's gonna sell off. We will see what it will happen. Oh. Euro yen on the daily chart, we approach this support. We don't know if now we are in a trendless environment, we are within a range. We are at the bottom of the range. We have this rejection here. Now, we don't know if the buyers, they're gonna push all the way up or they're gonna push somewhere around this area here. And then maybe the market is gonna sell off. I don't know. We think the range, this type of range, I prefer to be away from this environment. Although I know many people who use these pin bars to position and buy. Now, an interesting pair, which uh, we can keep on our watch list, guys, for this week, it's the Euro Canadian dollar. Uh, Canadian dollar, if you recall, they are expecting the interest rates to go from 1.25 to 2 point something. Uh, it's gonna be a big, a big move from the, Bank of Canada. So if we experience that move uh, in the next two days, so on Wednesday, so in the next few days, maybe we can see a bit of retracement from the euro. That will be ideal if we see a bit of retracement. So uh, we can short from this, uh, around this level here. Okay, so this is something I will keep an eye on. Pound Canadian dollar, it's hovering around this support, so not much to do. We don't have, we broke the structure of these lower lows. We didn't make any new low here, so the market is just moving sideways. Although the big picture is still down, we are in a downtrend, so uh, it's from a technical point of view, ideally we look for shorts because we are in a downtrend. Pound Australian dollar, uh, sorry, Euro Australian dollar. We had this broken swing. So the market make lower low. Ideally, if the market is gonna push back somewhere around this level or this level, I would like to sell it. So this is also on my watch list. Aussie cat, uh, I'm still bearish on this because we have this lower low here, we have this lower highs here. So I expect to see, anticipate to see uh, a move to the downside. So I'm bearish on this one uh, and it helps uh, I remember someone asked me 
was it last week or maybe a few weeks ago, if I take in consideration of the fundamentals, okay, and how do I blend the fundamentals with the technical picture? And guys, this is a very good example to show you. You can, you remember, I think it's better if I go back to the slide. Yep. Do you guys still see the screen? I changed it to PowerPoint. Can everyone see it? We can see on Wednesday here, but we expect the Bank of Canada from one and a half percent to take their interest rates to 2.25. We know that currently uh, we experience too much inflation around the world. So interest rates, uh, it's something, it's a tool that the governments uh, globally for years and years now they use to bring down the inflation and to keep a healthy economy as much as they possibly can. So a big jump to the number from 1.5% to 2.25%, of course, it shows that most likely they're going to increase them. It's uh, in trading, we, ne we can never be sure about an event, but in this case, we say most likely we are sure that they're going to do it. Okay, so it's kind of predictable that at the least temporarily, the Canadian dollar, it's going to experience some strength in the market. So yeah, someone says, see the charts. Okay, so uh, let me put the chart back. So if Canadian dollar, it's going to get, we cannot see PowerPoint. Okay, guys, that was just a second. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, now I'm sure everyone can see the PowerPoint, right? Here is the event I was talking about, the Canadian dollar. Uh, we have one and a half percent. They want to take it to 0.25. As I said, it's a big move and most likely they're going to do it. So, and especially in these uh, big moves, the market tend to appreciate them. So if we go back to the MT5 now, we can, before we go back for those, they just saw the PowerPoint. Now we expect Canadian dollar on Wednesday to get strength. What we see here, everyone, all the rest traders, they can see it. All right, so uh, most of them, they have the same belief that the Canadian dollar is going to get stronger. Now, back to the MT5. Here we are, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. If Canadian dollar is going to get strength, it's going to gain strength. It means the Australian dollar, it's going to get weak. So. If Australian dollar, it's gonna get weak, it means this market, it's a still in a downtrend. So we can see the downtrend continues, most likely, okay? So uh, the fundamental announcement can help this market to push lower. That's how I use the fundamental. If the technical, I have a technical picture which indicates lower highs, lower lows, low, so I know I'm in a downtrend, I'm in a good spot to sell. So the fundamentals, if they're going to uh, confirm the weakness, if they're going to confirm the strength of the Canadian dollar, because we don't know Australian dollar by Wednesday if it's going to be strong or weak across the board. So the fundamentals of Canadian dollar, if they're going to confirm um the strength of uh the economy of canada we can see this downtrend continues that's exactly and that's the only way how do i see fundamentals now at this stage of my trading career when i was a beginner and i was sitting uh, where you are sitting right now guys trust me i have the same questions and because 
I stayed for a long time. Uh, that's how I learn. Okay. Where is this in the chart? Okay, I see a few questions here, guys. First question for from Paulina. I am very new, please. Could you tell me when do you buy and uh, where would you place the line or where would you sell and place the line? No apologies, I'm new, but keen to learn as long as I understand. Thank you, Paulina. I really appreciate your question and I totally understand you. And uh, the purpose here as well with me guys is to educate you in trading as well and to try to be close to you uh, along with your trading journey. Okay, so uh, an example, where do you buy and where do you place the line? Which line? Ah, you are talking maybe about these lines here. Let's just find a clean chart. So, uh, so if I want, let's take this example, Euro pound. This is purely for demonstration. This has nothing to do with a trade I will take right now, okay? But I will just open and close the trade just to show you guys how do I do it, okay? Now, what I do, uh, if you have access to... to Admiral's... Uh, connected area. If you don't, please make a live chat on Admiral's website and uh, the guys will help you. They will guide you through. Okay. So I have preset up here uh, that Admiral's connection. Let's say we go to Euro GBP. I decided Let's go to the daily. For example, I decided that I want to enter here short to sell, and I want to have my stop loss 20 points above. So my stop loss, I put it here, it's 20 points. How much I don't use percentage anymore. I use only fixed cash of the account. How much I want to risk for this trade based on my account. I'm risking 200 euros per trade. And then I press set lots. If I want to sell right now on the market, I just press this button, sell, execute. And then if I want to take to put a take profit here, I will just touch on this line here, right click, modify my trade and I put my take profit where I want to put it. Let's say I want to put it here around these lows, which is the number 0 0.8393. So stop loss, sorry, take profit 0 0.8393. Modify, take profit appears, okay? If, for example, you've done something by mistake and you want to cancel, you just, right click uh, modify trade no it's not from here it's from the cell maybe on the cell yeah modify sorry right click uh, close close the cell I press and everything disappeared okay that was just to show Pauline another question from Robin. Can you show example of identified a support or resistance line on the chart? Definitely. Uh, so if you guys are a beginners, let me first clean a little bit here. 
So we do have this chart, how do I identify support and resist that? If you are a beginner, I advise you really to go to the line charts, press the line chart, make sure you are on the daily or on the weekly, it's easier for you. So, sorry guys, just... Uh, Let me remove something unweird I saw on the live streaming. So we use the turning points. The turning points, it's where we see the line bend it. So we see the line bend it here. We see the line bend it here. We see the line bend it here. We see the line bend it here, bend it here. We see many minor bends. However, I want you guys to focus on these big moves from where the line got bended. If a move was a big move, a long move in terms of distance, then we have a strong support or resistance. And how do we determine where, which one we're going to call support and which one we're going to call resistance? Whatever is below the current price consider as support. So below the current price is support and above the current price is resistance. Note this down, whatever is below, here is our current price. You can see the current price. So this uh, line here considers as support because it's below the current price. And uh, this line here is resistant because it's above the current price. I will not start drawing lines on this one, on that one, on this one. It's going to be very messed. Just draw lines close to the current price only. There is no need to. Uh, pull on your chart with lines, you're going to get confused. So uh, just follow the path and follow the lines. We had this line here. Some people, they can see this one here, which is fine. And they don't see this one. That's OK. But we, we name these uh, lines here as zones. We don't tend to say this is an accurate turning point. No, it's we treat them as zones. It's uh, it's more accurate in trading. Okay. Uh, and the last question: Canadian dollar will get stronger on every pair. Joel is asking if Canadian dollar will get stronger on every pair. Look, with this increase, with this uh, increase here, it's not a 0.25 or it's 0.75%. Uh, it's too much, too much. So what I can understand here is that the volatility will come in the market uh, will be quite significant. But if after this move, all the Canadian dollars against all the pairs, they're going to be uh, strong and they're going to drive a trend. Uh, I don't know that, okay? Because, let me go back to the charts, because For example, here we have the US dollar, it's also strong. Canadian dollar, if it's gonna become strong, we don't know which one it's gonna outperform. So far, we don't have any clear picture. We are just hovering sideways here. So we will see. But pairs like EuroCAD, where we can see that we are in a in a downtrend so euro it's behaving weak canadian dollar behaving with strength 
yes, on this pair here, I will definitely keep an eye on. On the Aussie CAD, I will definitely keep an eye on because we are in an established downtrend. Guys, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, it was really great to host this webinar for you uh, this morning. I hope you gain a lot of value. Please make sure you like and subscribe the videos on, on the YouTube when we upload it. And I will see everyone again on Wednesday morning. Have a good day.